Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. It's Mike Sorg, Sorgatron here on the Twitters, ready to get geeky, get techie with you guys. Uh, coming from the studio here in Pittsburgh, PA. I got the uh, crew and uh, and somebody returning here tonight. First of all, back with us this week, uh, back in his home abode, surrounded by all the technology, is Chilla, at Chilla on the Twitter. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. How are you? All right. All right. I am super excited from your tweet. I can't wait to hear all about your story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not investigated. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Also joining us from somewhere hiding in the scare house is uh, <laughs> Katie at K Dutters on the Twitters. How you doing? Good. How you guys doing? You found a non echoey place. That's that's great. Oh, good. I worked very hard at that for you. <laughs> And also, return to the show, he hasn't been on for a while. He's from 4orchestra.com, recently relocated to the uh, the greater Los Angeles area, I guess we can say. Is, uh, yeah. Is, uh, oh, I forgot to update his title. We'll fix that here while we're talking to you. Okay. Walt Ribeiro, how you doing? Dude, I'm doing awesome. And thank you so much for having me back. It's always a blast to be here. And uh, we're going to talk about some pretty cool stuff that I'm pretty excited for. Nice, so let's nice. just jump right into it. What's uh, up, everyone? Well, hey, uh, update us real quick uh, again while I'm fixing your title. Uh, <laughs> you know what are what are you up to? Uh, how's Four Orchestra going? What you know you know how how are things going in general? And introduce yourself to the people maybe haven't caught you on the show before. All right, so if people don't know who I am or what I do, uh, my name is Walt Ribeiro, and I arrange pop songs for orchestras. So I've done everything from like Lady Gaga to Skrillex to My Little Pony, and even I I've even arranged some of Mike's favorites like Justin Bieber. Oh, geez. so you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, like that. It's all went pretty well. Uh, I've been doing it for about for about the past six or seven years, and it's seeing kind of like an interesting turn now. You know, you know what's cool is that when I talk, my hands from the sunlight are glowing. <laughs> you know, it's like I feel like calm. You know, like I feel like I'm like a I'm like a superhero from like the Guardians of of the Galaxy or something. Um, so, uh, uh, where was I? I um. So I'm seeing like an an interesting turn where everything is going more towards Spotify and less towards downloading music. So I'm I'm going through a big uh, I think like reinvention where I'm trying to do more of um, of almost like the Patreon business model where my community sub- supports me with like with like a weekly you know set fund as opposed to kind of like anonymous purchases on iTunes and stuff. So I don't know. I mean, the music business is, I think, going through a pretty difficult, not, not difficult, but, you know, different transition. And I'm kind of going through that myself. So it's, you know, it's been a weekly thing, but uh, we'll see what happens in a couple months. I, nice. think, I think I want to, uh, I think I want to change it up, but I, that's it. That's the, ru- that's the rundown. I did not get to Justin Bieber one yet, uh, but I do have a few no. of your tracks. I, I do no, have the, we got the Doctor Who. We got the Mega Man. We got a. Uh, oh, got... cool! Oh, cool! You know what? Oh, you know what? You know what? What I can do? I can do uh, a Sorgatron exclusive if you want. Oh. Uh, I'm releasing a Mega Man one next week if if you wanted to listen to it. Oh, nice! Yeah, um, you know I'll play for the show if you want to listen. To it. Um, but I did not arrange Justin Bieber. I was only doing that as like a stab <laughs> to you. <laughs> nice. Jab. There's all kinds of fun stuff up there. If you ever want to know what Ozzy Osbourne sounded like uh orchestra form it's it's pretty cool it is a lot of it's, it's a, he's got a great catalog over there for orchestra.com go check it out uh and support him and you're actually going to stick around with us uh talk video games you're uh, judging by your post your and your, your your tracks you're a huge video game fan uh so i thought it'd be great for you to talk with boss battle and return with us tonight so cool yeah man i'm pretty stoked and yes i i i, I am a huge gaming fan Awesome. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to find out more about AwesomeCast, go to AwesomeCast.com. Uh, we're also on the uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, and Google+. And uh, find us on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, in audio and video forms, however you like to digest this content. And uh, please uh, check us out. We're also on Patreon, patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Uh, looking to get some supporters and uh, hopefully expand this out, try to do an interview show like we did for the wrestling. we got a lot of really cool people here 
here around Pittsburgh. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to we want to talk to him. We'll have a chance to talk to him. And hopefully if you guys are digging what we're doing here, we can build up and, uh, and uh, add on to that as well. And, uh, of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6.30 p.m. Eastern time or a little later if we have Guardians of the Galaxy to talk about on the Movie Minute because that kind of ran over. Um, and watch yourself for spoilers if that happens, too, because uh, we're definitely talking about a little bit of after credits there. So uh, with that, oh, and also on the live stream. Hey, here's the first bit of news, guys. Hey, Justin TV's dead. Did this dead, just dead? happen? It's dead. You go to their page. Hold on, I'll, I'll pull it up here. If you go to Justin TV, and I found this out, wondering my why my um, why my uh, feed wasn't working on the page. And they said, uh, Justin TV website, mobile apps and APIs are no longer in service. Thank you sincerely for seven years of live video memories. Um, thanks. Did someone, did someone buy them? Well. They bought Twitch. What is you, Justin TV Twitch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. YouTube, YouTube's buying Twitch, which is basically Justin TV kind of converted over and became Twitch and really jacked up my account when I wanted to actually use Twitch, apparently. Um, I'm guessing this is part of that. They're just like, we're getting by. We're getting bought. See ya. We don't need this anymore. Goodbye. Um, wow. I don't know. You know, I can throw in my two cents. I used to be in the Ustream partner program, and I remember Stickam used to be with the Twit TV guys and Leah mm-hmm. Laporte, um, you know, back when. And then you also had Blog TV, which was grabbing all of the YouTubers to yeah, throw we, them over. So Blog TV was bringing the YouTubers. Stickam was doing like the Twit TV thing. Ustream was doing more of almost like the music angle and almost doing like live podcasts, like almost like the awesome cast mm-hmm. stuff like that's going on right. That's going on right now. And then Justin TV was kind of, um, you know, I, I feel like that was more like vlogging or something, you know, like it wasn't like, like, but then, but then they pivoted, they did Twitch cause they knew that video games was going to be a big thing in a couple of years and kind of took off. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's interesting. Uh, it, it's funny you you name a bunch of those. We were on Blog TV. We moved <laughs> basically moved wherever the stream was less annoying because we never had money to get any, any uh, pro programs or anything like that. Um, but thankfully, I had a UStream uh, account sitting around, so we just kind of swapped up some HTML, and there we are. And people are already complaining about the commercials. So there's that. So. Another thing we'll fix if we get more Patreon supporters. So we're already building them up over on the Mayhem Show. So hopefully that'll happen here too. Uh, so uh, with that, you know, let's get into the awesome things of the week. And since Chilla's waiting for it, I'm going to go last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll build the suspense for that one. Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So I've been looking for a digital picture frame, something that's decently sized and able to be easily pictures uploaded to wired into a wall. I don't want something that's going to sit necessarily on a, uh, on a shelf. I want something that's going to hang on the wall. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a Kickstarter and I'm mulling over if I want to purchase this. Um, It's the EO one picture frame. And I saw this actually on some different um, podcasts and some things like that. It's the, electric objects and it's actually that they were trying to make a frame a digital picture frame that actually looked like a picture frame this this frame can sit on the it can hang on the wall as well as it kind of has a a small mount that you can actually sit it up on a uh on a shelf or on the back of pretty much any kind of table or or any flat surface um the Device measures 23 inches. It does run, I think, Android, and it has uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, two gig, two gig of flash memory, gig of RAM. Um, it actually has uh, a 3D graphics accelerator, four oh, wow. shaders, and two D, two two D graphic accelerators. Um, it'll actually display animated GIFs um, as well as pretty much any still frame. And it is full 1080p resolution, which you usually don't find in a frame, in a digital picture frame. Um, the Kickstarter actually, um, they're selling the base device at 499, or I'm sorry, two, 299. It's 300 bucks. Uh, it'll retail for 500, which is about the price of frames of its size that are around today but do not have the quality 
that this device has. Obviously, you'll be waiting till May um, to get this device. So it's a, it's a little over a year. They do have some some animations and some video out on the out on the Kickstarter site. There is only 40, uh, 39 hours to go. Um, so I'm, I'm still trying to decide if this is something I want to wait this long for um, or if other companies will create something. They actually have backing from a lot of different um, museums as well. Um, and they have artists that are going to generate art specifically for this frame. Um, I just think it's something that'll be nice once I finish my base to have down there. I can have all the art I want, kind of stream it, play it. And I, and I think it looks better than just leaving an Apple TV or a Chromecast up and kind of letting you, letting, letting pictures just rotate. To me, this is, this is a frame. It's something you can sit there while you're watching TV, um, put it behind a bar or something along that, that line. You know, and it looks like from the pictures we're seeing here in the video, like it looks like it, it's fairly thin. I just wonder of how glowy it is. You know, like I kind of want something that's going to be bright, vivid, but not like, you know, shining. I think in a dark room, it's definitely going to stand out because yeah. obviously it has to, it's, it's not like e-ink or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so it is going to have some brightness to it. Um, I don't know what the panel's made out of. Um, plasmas usually give the best blacks. It's an IPS display with anti-glare. Um, you're the video guy, so I don't know what 250 CV slash M2 brightness means. No, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a monitor guy, so I don't, no, I, I don't know that part. So, um, no, it looks cool. Uh, it's, uh, well, they're definitely making it. It's, uh, a 730, almost $730,000 uh, of their $25,000 goal. Uh, so cool. Cool. Yeah. And say anything else out there. You haven't seen anything that's this, this thin, right? Not this thin and not this large. Um, there's a Nix display that's 1366 by 768. So it's like in between 720 and 1080. It runs about. 250 um if you want it to be connected to things like facebook dropbox and instagram that's the whole thing if i if i mount this on a wall i don't want to have to be putting an sd card in and out of it that kind of thing i want something that i can kind of kind of load up from a from an app or from a service um maybe even create like a dropbox account or even what would be interesting is, is if you created a facebook account and had it had it stream everyone that tagged that Facebook account in their picture hmm. um, could get interesting. I don't know something something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I'm seeing most things that are that are not the quality but close to the price. So I, I don't know if other companies are going to step it up because this is doing so well, and obviously people are willing to, to pay the money for it. Mm -hmm. um, and this has companion apps as well. I don't know. Awesome. That's I, think, I, I think I think you should come in. I think there's a there's a backer um, level that's like, is it fifteen grand? <laughs> and you get five of them. Oh jeez. Oh no! It's oh no! I'm sorry. It's, it's only, only fifteen hundred dollars. You get five of them, nice. and they send someone in to. Uh, or no, maybe that's at the five thousand dollar level. <laughs> One of them, they send someone to your your location to actually help you design how they should be laid out. You get they get sent in with an interior decorator. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. If you want to check that out, that's the electric objects over on Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, then uh, you got uh, thirty nine hours to go. So if you're catching this tomorrow, sorry about that. Um, so daughters, what do you got? Hi, I have an I have another Kickstarter. Uh oh. It's the potato salad Kickstarter. Oh, no. We're about to make Chachi angry in the chat room. I know. Good. Uh, it raised over $55,000. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, over 6,000 backers. So, yeah. Um, kind of a big deal. So, Zach Danger Brown in Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> has, got, has got a lot of potato salad. Uh, now, we, we, we talked about this while this was going on. Yeah. Um, so, I... I don't 
I think it's inventive, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I don't think this is an abuse of Kickstarter. I know some of the talk. Uh, I, I don't know. What do you think, Katie? It's kind of hard to say that you're abusing Kickstarter because people are willingly giving their money. It's not like you are swindling them out of something. No. It's not like you're trying. But you know what I mean? Like, I understand the whole people getting upset about the well, people abusing Kickstarter and things like that. But I think it's this, you know what? People choose to play, put their money on crazy things all the time. Why not uh, do something crazy like this and seeing what happened? And I just think it's fantastic that they raised $55,000. <laughs> Which uh, gives me hope. Wait, you, you, I should introduce my Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. The one for the original Oregon Trail on my iPhone. I want it to be an app. The original. None of this crap, none of this color, none of these zombies. I want the original Oregon Trail on my phone. I'm wondering, I, th- there has to be an Apple IIe emulator or something out there for the iPhone. There's, there's everything else. There's Commodore 64. Wh- why not, right? So Exactly. Awesome. Uh, yeah, hey, Walt, you're getting into, you're looking at Patreon and, uh, you know, uh, uh, crowdsourcing kind of ideas for, for your kind of stuff. What, what do you mm-hmm. think of the, the potato salad uh, angle here? I, I think it shows the diversity of patreon uh you know and of kickstarter, kickstarter and the yeah. whole like crowds yeah yeah and the whole like crowdsourcing of it um wasn't the the potato salad thing started by the kickstarter founders wasn't it like their like their thing or no no i don't think so it was just some kid in ohio yeah mm-hmm. it's somebody in columbus ohio zach danger brown <laughs> <laughs> you just like saying his name i love his zach name danger, danger. Reminds me of Daily I want to know. Also. I want to know how he's going to fit 464 people in his kitchen. Wait, is that how many people got his thing? There's. If you pledge ten dollars, you you hang out in the kitchen with me while I make the potato salad. Oh, that's a do... that's a Google Hangout. Come on. He's going to have to do two potato salad days. He's going to have to do one on Friday, one on Saturday, and get 200 people the first day and 200 people shoved <laughs> in the second day. I want to see this guy's kitchen. This this has got to be a reality show or something, right? If it's not, it needs to be, right? Yeah, I, I would watch that. <laughs> this is guy's it? never made potato salad before. So this is his first time on top oh, of everything it? else. So that's part part of it. It's like that. This is 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 his first time ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's okay. Claimer. And like, and one of them was like, like you know, uh, you know, donate to this. You'll get some of the potato salad. I can't promise it's going to be any good. This is my first time. <laughs> was one of the early note, notes on here uh great great for him you know it makes me wonder like man why why doesn't my kickstarter stuff work you know when potato salad guy you know you just got to simplify a little bit i guess mm-hmm. so too complex too complex um awesome hey well i don't know i don't know if we prepped you for it uh but do you have an awesome thing it can be a gadget it can be anything uh that's kind of you know uh struck you you're using something uh uh lately uh i mean i've been taking up photography i you know i i think i think i think that's kind of cool like this has been like my hobby side of a hobby i do have a cool like arduino behind me that i've been building so i've been trying to build some like kind of like little miniature robots that are going to attack the world um that's it, you know. I got my right here. I got this little little piano next to me. Uh, so I mean, that's pretty much my life, you know. I got my Arduino, my camera, and my piano. Um, but you know, outside of that, it's just been kind of music writing. It's, uh, so 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 my big thing is I don't create content. I or I don't consume content. I create. I I I create it. So um, I, I spend so much time working, you know, every week writing new music that I don't really have a whole lot of time to like. You know, take up a whole lot of like side projects and you know make potato salad for people. <laughs> Which is a sad. That's a sad story. That's a sad story. I want to make potato salad. Well, you can kickstart somebody to help you make the potato salad. There you go. All right. Uh, I know Chill has been waiting for this one. Um, <laughs> so this is just an errant tweet I saw yesterday, um, but it was a tweet. By let me bring up the name uh, at uh, Karen McGrain on the Twitters, and I think it was retweeted by somebody else. It's not somebody I follow or anything like that. There is a Chrome extension that changes the cloud to my butt. This isn't one I want to hear about. What? What do you got? I want to hear your story about you. You were gonna load. Oh, Mac that's OS. not my awesome thing. That's my accidental <laughs> thing. 
Oh, yeah. Nature yeah. notes. Oh, yeah, really good. We'll get that and after the break. I want to hear about. We'll get that after the break. Okay, real quick. We, okay. Um, but no, uh, but this, the, this thing, um, and it's an extension that will replace anytime the cloud, the phrase, the cloud is seen on, uh, your web browser with my butt. There was a great picture that was included on Twitter, uh, from Autodex, Autodesk 360 innovation raised to the power of my butt. So if you're somebody like my wife, who is really not happy with the cloud right now because the implement implementation happening at work or whatever reason, or you're just tired of every chilla, you probably hear this a lot. Every every guy pitching something says we're putting in the cloud and actually we're not allowed to use the word the cloud. You're not. Can you use the word no. my butt? No, <laughs> we have to use at work. We ha we now because the cloud is so unknown as to what you're actually talking about. Mm hmm. And actually, certain companies are referring to the cloud, and it's actually for on-premise installations, and it has to do which with is, scalability. Which is, which is not the cloud at all. The cloud well, is out do, there, yeah. right? So we have to say, like, it's either on-premise or off-premise, and then it's single-tenant or multi-tenant. Wow. Wow. So, like, I could say that if I say the cloud, nobody knows which one it is. So, like, I'm actually doing an implementation, and it's off-premise multi-tenant. So that's my implementation of something I'm doing at work. It's cloud hosted. It's a cloud hosted solution. But it's become but, a bad word. But it, it's become a bad word, especially in, in different industries with mm -hmm. regulators. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's not descriptive enough. Uh, we had a convers We had an interesting conversation with Google about uh, their some of their cloud implementations. If you if you use Google for business, and they they explained to us that. Your your mail could be on a boat in the middle of the ocean. I think we may have had this discussion before. So so that didn't make us too comfortable with wh with where our data might be, and it's inter intermingled with everyone else's. So um, so yeah, we we have to give more definition to what yeah. the cloud means. I, I know it's such a like from the start, it seemed like a bad idea. This one implementation I was hearing about because even when they were there pitching it, the company I believe Microsoft or somebody using Microsoft, I, I can't recall. But every time they pitched it, they said the cloud, and they looked up and the and the arms came out. And it's the cloud, <laughs> and and that's how they they're like, well, what, 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 what you know, what, what's the problem? What, you know, what, where was the stuff at? And they'll go, oh yeah, there was something wrong with the cloud, you know, and, and that's yeah. That's that's fun. Um, but you hear it everywhere. Like, you know, when you hear the ads, like, you know, say in front of every applicable podcast or every banner ad or even like I saw see cloud commercials on television. Well, there's the, the movie, the movie uh, sex tapes coming out, isn't it this weekend? Uh, it was a couple weeks ago, I think. Oh, it didn't do it's well. already out. Then. Yeah. But that's all, that's all about him uploading to the cloud. Part of the problem with saying cloud, though, is that my parents don't like my parents think that they add that 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 it means like it's actually in the sky somewhere. But is and it? And that's like a serious concern because it's not. It's just it's it's mm -hmm. it's a server, just not five feet away from you. But isn't that like part of the translation? Because they want you to say this is not like the iCloud. It's not on your phone. It's in the iCloud, which means it's not it's not here. So that idea that you know my phone dies gets thrown in the toilet whatever my stuff is still out there you know like isn't that kind of needed for somebody on that level it would it would be yeah but to say cloud to a 60 or 70 year old person they, they they don't they don't they don't understand what that mean i mean like my like my 12 year old nephew would know more about the cloud than my parents would and the problem is like the like people just don't it, it it would be smarter if you called it like just like remote location, you know. I mean, if you just called it what it is rather than something fancy. Um, it's why you know what, like it's why I think that net neutrality doesn't have any like mainstream appeal because no one knows what the words net. Like my parents don't know what net neutrality means. I still get confused you know? on it. I still get confused too, and I'm in it. You know, it's yeah. like I mean, it's yeah. just. I think I think I think that words are very important, especially when describing something, but also just in like. You know, just call it, just naming something. It's just, um, I don't know. I, I, I think that the reason why people get, you know, freaked out about the cloud being like on a boat or something is because they, they, they don't know what the cloud means. I, I don't think that's, that's a good word for it. 
Well, that's one of the my, prompts, my one of the prompts rant. with technology is the fact that we use words that we're comfortable with to describe something else. Like the web is not necessarily a spider web, but it's a bunch of connections. It's just the way we describe things. We attach these words to technology and then suddenly they lose their meaning. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's when you're trying to simplify something and then it suddenly gets so watered down that no one knows what you're talking about. I think you see that breakdown too, because that recent Aereo decision where they attributed the that technology to taking a card out of the library or something like that. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's people are trying to make sense of it, you know, older people like that. And that's where, unfortunately they're the ones making the laws. So, yeah. Um, so uh, we got an app of the week. I, I Sam Jackson. <laughs> what is this? Oh man. Uh, it, it's, it's an older app. It's it came out in 2010, but I just found it now and I don't know which ones are oh, not. No sweary uh let's see i think this might be minimal Damn swear Skippy. Damn Skippy. but it's a whole <laughs> bunch of sam at samuel jackson um just you have the whole line of the words or it has oh, it's just like a soundboard yeah it's fantastic and it's alphabetized like a whole list looks like um your contact list and there's a the clean one is free but the Dirty word one is 99 cents and it's totally worth it. Yeah, let's be honest. We all want the dirty word one. Oh, mm -hmm. it, I, I've just been answering conversations today with Samuel L. Jackson. It's been pretty fantastic, <laughs> but yeah, there's, it's pretty, it, it's awesome. Like I said, it's, it's been around for four years now and I've never seen it. <laughs> awesome. Well, you knew I'm new to the iPhone. I'm going to blame it on that. Yeah. They don't have, cool, they don't have cool stuff like this. Over. I'm surprised they got away with the explicit tag because Weren't they? Weren't they kind of pushing? I, I can't remember. They, they've they've let up on the the explicit stuff on the Apple. Well, because you can part. rate it. Okay, so you can give it a rating. I, it's, I think it's the issue becomes it's not explicit. It's the issue of I think nudity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where this probably gets away with it. If you look on the avatar on my screen, it says it's his picture, and on the app itself, it says seventeen plus. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, exactly, that's what they do. That, that's the only one I have like can, that. The funny part is, is that alternative browsers have to be rated seventeen plus, because obviously the browser, like Chrome, mm -hmm. actually has an adult rating mm -hmm. on, on iOS because you could go to a site that then had adult content. Yeah, yeah, which is funny because you can on Safari too. So mm -hmm. yeah. All right, um, I, we got to give a plug here, and then I'll get to finally that thing that Shilla wants me to get to. Um, so uh, a big, big week that for our friends over at Slice on Broadway. Of course, you know they're the ones providing a, a pizza to us every week. To uh, 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 you know that Chill has been enjoying. I know when he comes in studio, guests in studio. Blingo is just in uh, enjoying it. Uh, they're right up the street here. If you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, uh, go check them out. Right on the tracks uh, here in the Beachview area. But they have a new location. Uh, just opened up in Carnegie, so if you're ever in Pittsburgh and you're on your way, your way out to the airport, you might want to swing by. Uh, no, that's this I Sam Jackson app. That's not right. That's not right at all. Uh, we'll get you can up. take your app there. You can take your <laughs> Sam Jackson app. I'm sure they'll 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 appreciate it. Uh, but they just had their grand opening, so a second location. So great guys down there. We've had uh, Katie and I and Chilla have all had great conversations with the with the people down there. Uh, great pizza. Our friend from New York City uh, uh, qualifies it as good enough for a New Yorker for us. Uh, so go please check it out. Check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com and let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast. Chilla, I'll finally talk about it. Oh, sweet. So well, here, my, 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 actually on my production device, my mouse is hovering over download right now. <laughs> you, and, and I don't your, know what your production is like. You, this is not a recommendation. This is an oops. Okay. <laughs> and I blame you. Okay. So, oh, my fault. so we talked about this leak. What did you say? You said that well, you can download it and install it on a key drive, right? On a thumb drive. On a thumb drive. Yes. I said, make sure you read the instructions online. Make sure you. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Why would I you said, and I, I, yeah, I said there's instructions I, online about how to install it to, on a thumb drive. This is the part where I should listen back to my own show. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, you throw you a thumb drive in. I'm just not. Do not install it on your production. No, machine. do not install it. And I, but I'm using my production machine to install it on the thumb drive, and unfortunately, it wouldn't let me get back to my installation. Ah. 
I don't know if it's well. It did finally install in the thumb drive. When I did do the thumb drive, it was way too slow, far ah. too slow uh, to be functional at all. And then I I got back, and all it'll show when I pulled out the drive was restore drive for uh, Mavericks or uh, the installation <laughs> disk, the ins- the the the. the Oh, uh, you know, the temporary kind of, you know, this is where your installation is, this thing. Right. Yeah, the technical term, right? Um, so I was stuck. So I'm like, okay, um, let's just go ahead and do this. If it's, thankfully, thankfully, everything I do on this machine is synced to Google Drive. So something happened, even though I had to, I am in the middle of a project in, on this machine, I was a little worried, but I knew I was at a point where I could recover it if need be. I know I can wipe everything, start over, throw Mavericks on. We're good to go. Give me a day to download everything and we're, we're okay. Um, I got to say, not, not bad. I have not seen a known problem based on this operating system. Uh, this is the OS X Yosemite we're talking about, the beta, the open public beta that anybody can get. Which is and the open public dangerous. beta is a weak... Is a, is it looks like, and it'll be interesting because we'll find out next week. The public beta is a week behind the developer beta, so the developers should find bugs prior to you experiencing them, and they'll be fixed prior to the public beta update. Sounds good. <laughs> so you should be a little more solid than the developers, but I guess we'll find out next week because it'll done. be two weeks in. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I mean, I did have some issues today where uh, Final Cut was was crashing in the middle of a project. But one of the reasons I love Final Cut is because it just saves everything. So mm-hmm. unless it's like that one file is kind of corrupt or something, and it'll just recrash and recrash every time I load it. Uh, thankfully, I'm getting better about managing my snapshots in there, so I'm able to work around that bit. Um, and but that was something that was happening last week with the same project, so I don't attribute it to the OS yet. Um, aside from that, I mean, I do basic like I do my social media scheduling work stuff on there, so I'm basically in Chrome the whole time. Chrome feels kind of smoother, to be honest. Some other and- things feel kind of smoother. I mean, this is a newer MacBook. This is a late 2013 i7 MacBook with uh, 16 gigs of RAM. So I mean, it's, it's not that. It, I don't think it really did feel sluggish below, but it definitely does feel a little smoother. Well, I think I have something in the show notes, too, around Chrome. Are you on the Chrome stable or dev? Uh, what the general, or I download Chrome that. from the website. Okay. Well, all of them come from the website. It's just depending on, because yeah. today, Canary and dev released the 64-bit um, Chrome for Mac OS, Bring which they on. did for Windows a couple days ago. So we should be getting that hopefully soon on the stable channel, mm-hmm. on the beta and stable. So I did not install dev and I do not run Canary, but I did see it in the news. So maybe we'll be seeing some uh, faster stuff coming out of Chrome. I mean, they had, they had to do it for other reasons that I think AJ talked about before that had to do with a lot of the Java stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Java's only being developed in 64 or bit, but uh- I, You've convinced me, so download commencing. <laughs> well, I mean, what and what kind of development are you worried about on your end? You know, like I'm what? not worried about. Uh, I'm actually I I installed it on another machine, and I the only thing that I was worried about was um, two apps that I use for work, and I validated them on the old Mac Mini, mm-hmm. um, so I can still still do my stuff for work on that that machine. It's pretty much a virtual machine image and a couple couple uh, apps and tools. We're doing bash scripting, mm-hmm. so I'm good to go. Um, so I, got, I got 18 minutes until this until this installs. Which I, I mean, wait, you're, wait, you're I, downloading it now while you're streaming video to us. That's not a great yeah, idea. I got 75 up, 75 oh, down. I don't know. I don't know if mine kicked in. All I'm saying. Oh, that's the other thing. You you gave that tip to up update your uh, internet by uh, getting on the BIOS. Re- fi- yeah, I saw BIOS something force. happen. It crashed your. Yeah, router. yeah. Oh no, no. My internet went down about an hour later. Oh, that's nice. Though. Which, by the way, never happens. So, did you did you call and shake your fist at them? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I was still busy trying to figure out what happened and and, and texting everybody to figure try to get them back on the did show. It, did it just take a reboot or what? Uh, no, it just came back after. I didn't even get upstairs to reboot the router. So, wow, yeah. Because when yeah. I did it, I didn't. Well, what I have noticed 
going down. I, I mean, it may have been a blip, but no, I, I didn't see any reboots or anything. Oh. But if you if you run some speed tests now, you should see your your up speed matches your down speed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll have to I'll have to go check that out. Uh, not down here with all the stuff going on, obviously. Um, I only have one computer actually like tethered into it, so. We'll, we'll 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 try that later. Um, am, am I allowed to show this? Like, like I'm just not allowed to review this, right? Like, like you can no, nothing on this. Talk. What is it? You can talk about it. I think it has something to do with pictures. Yeah, like you're not show, supposed to show imagery. It's very flat. Yeah. I mean, the, you, you can see the pictures anywhere. It, it's very flat. It's uh, you, it's it's kind of uh, uh, there's a lot of transparency. Like like subtle transparencies. Um, I like that the the green button that would never make things go full 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 screen is now the full screen button. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that really confusing because I really like like just pulling everything full screen, like especially like Final Cut when I'm editing in that and and just want the full 15 inch you know browser going on. And it seems to affect about everything. I haven't checked out actually. I'll check out Photoshop while I'm thinking of it uh, because that's okay. Typical- but then. But then what happens to the arrow that's at the upper right? It's not there um, anymore. It's the, gone. Oh, that so, is the green button now on the left side. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is basically they changed the function to what that used to be. And also, like, see, I want to pull the green up. green button made no, made no sense before. Now, now. Were to minimize and make it bigger exactly, and whatever. It exactly. Uh, especially coming over from Windows like I did. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it doesn't affect everything. So, like, I, I put up Photoshop and Photoshop never had a full screen version. Um, I think it's just for apps that had that. They, they're just That's translating that over. So, What do you think about the new notification center? Um, I, I like it. I, I, I know there's some of this I can't get into yet because I don't have iOS 8. Like, I don't have the syncing or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, screw it. I can show this. We'll pop that up there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it looks just like when you pop left on your, on your uh, iPhone. Uh, I, I'm not used to it is the only thing I'm not used to peeking over there. Um, it's a lot more functional. Uh, I like you can rep- when your tweets pop up, typically you click on it and it would just take you to the web browser that I'm never logged in on for Twitter. Cause I have so many accounts, um, mm-hmm. but it, that you can reply to a tweet right there is really nice. Uh, messages seems to load a lot quicker than it used to seems a little bit more synced. I have not tried. I should be able to text anybody now, right? Um, we were talking about last week. Yeah, I don't know. Your phone might have to be on iOS eight. That's probably yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I, phone, I know I I'm not your getting. Your phone's gonna have to be on iOS eight first. But. So I, I know I'm not getting all the functionality. Let me type in a number, see what happens. Maybe no, those are all iMessage actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm typing in a area code. And it's all iMessage. So, um, but really, just kind of continuing as I have been. Um, What's, did it affect battery life at all, or have you noticed? It feels like it's affecting battery life, like in the negative. Like in the I, negative, I, okay. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Or maybe I just notice more. Um, but no, it, it feel it definitely feels like like battery's going a little bit more. But it might be just because I'm doing a little more video or streaming or hangouts or something. Uh, well, that and the betas week. usually have a bunch of debug code in there for yeah. for blogging, so yeah, it makes so. sense that if it's it's a little worse Mm -hmm. then it should get better as as it goes along but we'll see uh itunes like i said itunes kind of makes more sense i know you said you kind of missed the sidebar Um, yeah i do miss the sidebar but it's they have these this set of icons up here let's see let that refresh there um uh up on the upper left that's let's see can i do this here let's work on this thing no that doesn't work what happened to my Zoom function that I used to have on these things? Um, but no, everything seems organized a bit more for, as far as uh, video, audio, uh, music. Like I, I, I get where I'm at more mm-hmm. often than not. Um, and I notice like the store and everything. Like I'm in music and I have I have listings for uh, playlist, match, radio, and iTunes store. So I don't have to decide I need to go to the iTunes store to get to a certain function. Like I'm already on movies. I'm just going to get to the movies version of the store. So it seems mm-hmm. a little more streamlined as far as that goes. So um, generally, I, and still, I do not recommend if this is your primary machine to jump in on it this early. Uh, again, I, I'm kind of just kind of backed up that if something goes wrong, I'll be going again within 24 hours on whatever I was doing. 
It's not a problem for me. And that's the way I do it because I'm always worried about what happens to this portable machine I'm carrying everywhere, right? And I happen to have a project on it. It needs to be in the cloud, wait, the cloud, as we were talking about. Um, so I kind of treat this, even though it, ha- it can do all this other stuff, I kind of treat it like I do a Chromebook, you know, mm-hmm. um, and make sure everything's saved to the right place and it can do the same thing. So, which keeps my desktop clean a lot better than my, my, my desktop machine. That's for sure. So how do you, I mean, uh, you're using, you're working with video. How many, how much space do you have in the cloud? For video, I pay for, <laughs> I like to put the arms out. Um, <laughs> I pay for the terabyte on Google Drive now, okay. and then I do all my backups through Backblaze, um, which is five bucks a month for unlimited. I last check, I have about fourteen terabytes backed up on Backblaze, and wow, I have Backblaze. A, and I have about twenty earmarked to go up. Wow! So they, twenty terabytes. Yeah, uh, they don't care how many Drobos I have hooked up to them. Okay, and they are awesome. You you use Drobos for everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, that and just a myriad of other kind of portable drives. Okay, um, because I use okay. What do you I use? bought a Drobo and I returned it because I didn't know that they have the the uh, the data duplication. So it's not really a JBOD and it's not a RAID. It's almost like a like a special combination of the two. Yeah. So it was kind of strange, and I didn't like it. So I bought this JBOD. I got these these four one terabyte drives, mm-hmm. and those are synced to Google, mm-hmm. and um. That's it. That's my that's my backup plan. Uh, it's nice because it's because it's it's backed up here. Anything I have on that, any retired projects, any current projects that I have running on that machine, for the most part, um, and you know it's Stripe. So if, and I've had drives fail. I've had like I put a new drive in, and a week a week later it says, "Hey, this failed," and I had to uh, send it back to Newegg. Uh, so wow. it's been it's been really yeah. nice, really nice for that. I've had that one failure, and I know because I'm like, "Oh, a new drive. I'm just going to pour all my stuff onto this, right?" And so I can, you know. Uh, uh, open up these drives over here, and hmm. we're good. It's just, I just had to exchange it, wait for it to come back, plug it in, good to go. I love that. It's like, okay, what's the smallest drive in here? I let you know by the lights. My problem now, we're getting into weird technical stuff today. I know. My problem now is I have one of them full of four. Oh, wait, are we not supposed to talk about like heavy tech stuff? <laughs> Sometimes like, we're getting a little heady and technical here, but we haven't done this. We haven't done a deep dive on hardware like this for a while. So, okay. and my and my production habits. Um, I'm getting to the point where I have one that's uh, already full of four terabyte drives. So where do I go next? Nothing's affordable. There's not really even are they even making like Amazon doesn't have five terabytes. I don't think like we're hitting a ceiling there. So now I have to buy more Drobos, which I can, wow. which I already have a stack of two, three terabyte drives. I can stick in there and I just upgrade as I go. So like I can imagine if I keep going on this path, I'm just going to have a stack of like six Drobos going on. Try gonna... shooting in 4k, man. <laughs> I know, right? I'm ridiculous. just, I'm just doing an HD and hell not even HD half the time with this, these wrestling projects. Um, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot. And, and these, you know, the video for these, um, thank you. H264. Holy crap. Uh, but yeah, it's been interesting. So, uh, all right. So I'm off the, the uh technology kick. Yeah. <laughs> this is the place to do it. I I just worry about going over some people's heads as far as some of the tech is the only thing. So um but it's helpful and I get it, you know. So we well, have a few other things in here. Are, are you satisfied, Chilla? Are you you're you're still downloading? Like, uh, it's, it's less than a minute. Less than a minute. Are you gonna like Wait, are you going to try to upgrade the computer you're on with us right now? Like, please tell me there's a different computer. Oh, I'll wait to click continue till we did, till oh, I disconnect. We're going to be like signing off. He's like, install. <laughs> and I'm going to get all these tweets from him in about 30 minutes. No, I mean, like out. I said, I, I have it running on a, on another device. I made sure that the, the few things that I need to be able to use. You've done precautions. You've done precautions. Uh, yeah, what worries me is over time, there, there, there's... There's things that could break over time and like mm-hmm. the next update or, or oh, for I've, sure. I've seen that. I've seen that with iOS, right? Yeah. And, and that's the other thing. Like I have, happen. I have another machine, you know, if, if but, this goes yeah. south and I, it, I'm, it's down for 24 hours, I have another machine. I have a problem if I need to go take a project to the coffee shop, you know, then this windows eight machine is not going to do that, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But still like, I feel like I'm 
safe enough to to be able to do this stick my neck out like that so and it's fun it's just fun the the, the jump ahead on this never doing it to my phone again that was a <laughs> horrible horrible idea um, i've had i've had pretty good luck with the phone so far that was rough not as bad as like aj had but still um no i'm not going to get into that story um <laughs> So we can legally unlock our phones now in America. Not you'd be it's not that about time. not that you'd be able to tell by the signs that are outside on the streets downtown Pittsburgh um, <laughs> that it was ever illegal. Uh, so so Chilla, you like this? I do like this. Um, I actually use it as a way to resell the phone, um, so I can get my next phone at a. I have money to buy a next phone, so I, I upgrade my phone every year and usually come out ahead. Um, I, it's easy to sell the device. A lot of people usually want it, especially business people that are trying to travel overseas and just want to want to flip pretty much a, a SIM card out of the device and, and, and be able to be pretty much on any carrier at any given time. Um, I did it originally because... I was on T-Mobile, and at that point in time, T-Mobile didn't have the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, so that's why I've done it in the past. Um, the, the trick will be is so it's now legal to do it, but are the carriers going to have to do it? Um, AT&T does it right now, I think, if you're a customer in good standing for... Six months? Either, three or six months. I was yeah, here in okay, six, six months. months. That I was surprised yeah. about that. T-Mobile, it's 90 days. Mm -hmm. You have to remain a customer, but I mean, or you're going to be paying your... Well, that's the thing. You're still going to pay it off. It's not like you can go anywhere, but if you decide you get another... I I mean, what's the use case for this? Like, you're giving the phone to somebody else? You're giving the phone to someone else on another carrier that uses the same signal. So if you're going AT&T to T-Mobile, pretty much, the, the use case is much more widely used overseas. Yeah. Um... Or if you're jumping onto like Rogers in Canada, um, the U.S. is one of the only ones with a lot of CDMA like Sprint and Verizon. So we're a little bit of a different use case, but I could see why people would want to unlock mm-hmm. their phones. And plus- Especially if you look at, at companies like AT&T or, or Verizon that you, you go to Mexico for a week and you're, you're data roaming at like a dollar a minute or something around there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome awesome uh i got another story of speaking we were talking about backups i should have rolled this in here um uh backblaze uh i i've always followed their blog and they've always shown like the storage pods that they make that they kind of cr- invented they're just these giant yeah. red cases that they just put hard drives in right um there's actually a company that's that's putting those pods out based on their design. And I actually had Backblaze tweeting at me because I'm like, oh, hey, they're doing the thing that they're doing. And they actually clarified everything. It's called 45 Drives. Um, and yeah, you can get these giant, crazy red storage pods. I'm actually kind of <laughs> considering something like this <laughs> if the Strobo situation keeps going the way it is, right? And I bet you could probably do like a, a raid kind of situation with this and uh, you know, have everything, you know, redundant there. Uh, cause everyone needs, um, 180 terabytes in a four year. Oh, you exactly. <laughs> I, but what, isn't this for like, like video production people to do their backup? Uh, I'm guessing or data centers, data centers for sure. Data centers. <laughs> and, and they're, they're a lot cheaper. They're a lot lower overhead. They're just kind of a very, very bare bones kind of system. Like just enough to get the hard drives going. Um, so you can check that out at 40 dri- 45 drives.com. Something I'm excited about to see that they're doing. Cause I, I've actually been interested in that because they, 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 they show a lot of it to the point where I think you could make your own storage pod, but you would have to do, you know, a little bit of, I don't know, Dremel tooling or something to put this thing mm-hmm. together, you know? So definitely outside of what I could do. Now, if you have a subscription to the tech shop, you'll probably be completely okay with making something like this. So. Just go get it 3D printed. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, hotel finds $500 for every bad review on Yelp. What's going on here? Did you guys see that? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I saw something is... about it, but I didn't, I didn't actually read it. So I'm glad you had it 
posted. This is like the like Barbara Streisand effect. Like it's just going crazy now. And it's amazing because actually, if you look at their Yelp reviews beforehand, they were awful to begin with. No wonder they were upset about them. And then now everybody's posting one star and repeating the story. And I can't believe you would do this. And I just can't believe in the world of social media that they would be stupid enough to do this. Well, how do they enforce it? It's it's in the contract. If um, there's wording in in the contracts for the um, bridal parties and whenever they sign up to have events at this particular facility. Hmm. And this is a this is a uh, hotel in in Hudson, New York. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, this is so. This isn't a chain. No. Wow. Yeah. It, it'll probably have a new name pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with an un, under new management sign, like the Econo yes. Lodge we experienced, right? So. Yes. Well, it's it's funny because I I booked a hotel for next week. I'm going away for a few days. And the hotel, I, I looked at it originally, the, the reviews were, this is a problem with the, the lobby and, and something looked dated. And then when I went to the website, they're like, we've updated this for this year. And they were just taking that feedback and you know, fixing the problem as mm-hmm. opposed to totally opposing any sort of feedback that might improve their business. I just, I thought it was totally wrong way in the hospitality world. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Um, so, uh, that, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. You'd think they'd, they'd be up there, but updated by now. Um, but, um, and what else we got here? Uh, in car heads up display lets you respond to text with hand motions in voice. Is this you Chilla? Yeah, that's me. It, it seemed like a pretty cool device for, for cars that don't have some kind of advanced nav let alone the fact that it kind of creates a heads-up display. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice that you can kind of put this in any car. Um, obviously, it's gonna. Re- I think it's going to retail at like, uh, well, it looks like another Kickstarter. It's four ninety nine retail. It's going to come in. My device is like scrolling like crazy. Um, four ninety nine. It looks like Kickstarted for two ninety nine early. Um, I don't know. The quality looks pretty decent. It's a small device you can kind of set up on your um, dashboard. It kind of has a translucent piece of glass you can kind of look through, keep keep your eyes on the road while being able to see incoming phone calls, um, maps, navigation information, things of that nature. Um, I don't know. I, I think we're going to see more and more of these devices as the car plays and the Google I don't know what their version of CarPlay is, but um, as those technologies come out, obviously not everyone's going to rush out to buy buy a new car. A lot of cars don't support the universal head units of yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think you're going to see more and more of these gadgets and gizmos that try to integrate, especially for people that bought a car within the last five years and have no ability so to So it's really the what they're shown here in the video it's really just like putting a little transparent screen up on your dashboard for for those that are on audio and maybe can't see the video so there's this little box with this little screen like this this transparent screen that's going to just project everything onto like it's not actually projecting onto like your windshield itself it just well, it in looks like it, it, in in the picture I don't know picture 3 of 7 um <laughs> It, it does show it projected up onto the the front windshield. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. And I, I, I'm not going to lie. Maybe, I didn't watch the video. And, and, and maybe that's, and maybe that's going to be a, a, a version of it later where it just projects onto that. So, um, well, at least it's like keeping your eyes up. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I, I kind of think that this is going to be, I feel like, uh, if you hear about people getting pulled over because they have too much stuff dangling from their windshield mirror, like I feel like you pass a state trooper and they see this thing saying on your dash, you're 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 going to have a, a conversation about it. But but I've seen cars today that have heads up display. Now they're they're typically only showing you current speed and and some bare bones information. But I mean, I don't I don't think a cop's going to be able to spot this as easy as they're going to be able to spot. Mm-hmm of fuzzy dice hanging from your mirror mm-hmm. it feels like google glass for cars yes from the looks of it i would agree with that 
Awesome. Well, on that point, uh, time to wrap up here, guys, so we can go talk about some video games. Walt, thanks for joining us for orchestra.com. Oh, I think you're muted. Yeah, uh, you know what? Um, as the sun's moving over, it's like I feel like that. You know, it's getting crazy. You know, it's getting like like that. I'm getting more sinister. Like I started really happy, and now I'm like, what? What do you want from me? Where are you now? Anyway, <laughs> well, we'll uh, see. We'll yeah. see what the sun does to you up here on ba- boss battle uh, coming no, up here shortly. I will, I, you know what? I'm always in a good in a good mood. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Also, uh, Katie at K Dutters on the Twitters. Gun show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you've been you, you've been very hands on out there at Scarehouse. Oh yeah, I'm actually covered in stain. If you look at me closely, I look like a leopard. There's just I have freckles of just stain, and I played with spray paint today. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome i right, go check that out i'm sure we'll hear more about what's coming up at scare house they're actually linking out you got a name of the new house that that came out recently right it's the summoning the summoning the summoning mm-hmm. uh looking it, forward to that crazy i can't wait it, it's gonna be so awesome and as we get closer i'm just getting more and more excited about it that's cool that's cool if you want to check that out it's uh scarehouse.com um they always have awesome videos there's a great video with margie the 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 sociologist that studies fear and all the crazy stuff she's been doing jumping out of planes jumping off of buildings um and recently going to the gathering of the juggalos so that all fits together (laughs) somehow the scariest Uh, thing ever the scariest thing ever for some i don't know i don't know bobby f j town says that the women from she's like he's looking at the picture of the women from the gathering of the juggalos and they scare him so he has to get over that one. Uh, Chilla's at Ch- Chilla on the Twitters. That's where I'm at. And I'll be back next week. I'll be probably in studio. Awesome. Awesome. Hello. Awesome. And my dog will bark at you too, like he does everybody else today. Holy crap. Um, and of course, I'm at Sorgatron. Sorgatronmedia.com. If you want to check out all the shows going on, we got so many. We have six shows we're doing here every Tuesday and more. War happening throughout the week. We got we got Panel Riot that just added uh, last week that uh, LB is doing from the Wrestling Mayhem show. We're talking about some comic books and uh, make sure to check out uh, Rambling Movie Minute. We had Dan Greenwald from the comic book pit joining us to talk about guardians of the galaxy we got guests all over the place so we're having a lot of fun here um and of course the usual wrestling shows uh as well you can join us here live tuesdays at 6 30 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com tweet us at mayhem show uh i'm sorry no wrong show at awesome cast uh <laughs> awesome cast on the facebook on the google plus and we're over on itunes youtube stitcher spreaker please uh subscribe to us on any of those or all of those that'd be cool too uh like us star us uh, uh, friend us, comment, anything to help us out. Let us know uh, that you're digging it and share it with your friends, of course, as well. Uh, big thanks to Mike Allen that's been doing the tweets and does the show notes for us every week. You can go check him out at Michael Allen PR on the Twitters uh, and where he does ready things. He's a journalist fellow. Um, and with that, uh, thanks to our awesome chat room that's been joining us all night at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome.